Lady Elizabeth Autumn McReynolds Groves. I said it that time. You did. Because I'm not even going to mess with you You say it better it. than I do. Um, that's because I paid for it, so I'm going to use it. Right? I'm going to use it. I'm trying to bring up our thing here mm -hmm. and um, and make sure that stuff's going. Look, there we are. There it's we are. always so fascinating. Eight seconds ago. Oh, crap. Is the volume off, I hope? If not, I'd be hearing it, right, yo? I'm pretty sure it is. Okay, so that's two things that I remembered, which one was the lights, so we're not disturbed, and two is the thingy, the volume. So I'm proud of me. Go me. Okay, so um, our <clears throat> usual um, off-camera lovely lady's not here tonight. She's not feeling well, so she's in the bed. She might still participate via comment <laughs> if y'all wish to comment also. And for me to see it, I have to, like, manage it. So remind me. Um, y'all can message me on Facebook, on my cell phone, or try the comments. And uh, we're going to try to keep up with that crap. So we have some stuff. Um, <clears throat> first that I want to get out of the way. Okay, so... I never know what we're going to talk about until we're talking about it. I don't know if anybody else knows that except for our lovely uh, Miss Carol. But um, I think we try to sometimes, you know, organize it, but it never works out. Right. Well, we kind of, we sometimes, like, we did those questions and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and that's cool to do. But normally we have conversations that are kind of idiotic and just evolve. You know, we talk about Basically. everything from from science to poo, um, and sometimes in the same sentence, right? Science um, <laughs> Right, but this, and we have the conversation anyway, is, um, is the title of this podcast, because as I was preparing for it, I thought, what do we always talk about? And I was like, we talk about the crap we don't want to talk about. Always one of us is like, ah, we're talking about it anyway. And, um, we used to call those, like when I was growing up, we called those bedroom conversations. Okay. Did, do you know what I mean by that, by bedroom conversations? Anybody? Anybody? The conversations you have behind closed doors. Right. So behind closed doors, you would talk about money, politics, and religion. But you never talked about them, um, you know, just in regular conversation. And so I found it interesting that that is now separate from um, those hot topic conversations. Those used to be the hot topics, but now the hot topics are sexism and racism and uh, egotism. Everybody wants to talk about who's an egomaniac or who's egotistical or, you know, who's, uh, who's screwed up in the head, right? Um, we make a lot of judgments on people that we see, and it's not always government, it's not always politics, it's even in Hollywood, right? So we see somebody on a reality show and we make a snap judgment because they're on the reality show, right? And we say, oh God, what kind of person would? And then somebody says, I don't even want to hear about it. But yet you talk about it anyway, mm -hmm. right? You just don't give a shit. You're like, you know what? No, this is something for me to discuss, right? So what are those topics that you talk about anyway? Even though somebody's like, mm-mm, Nope. Um, gosh. Uh, this is sort this, of a trick question, yeah, just so you know. Since I'm not really into politics anymore, um, at least I try to avoid politics. You know, I also avoid po um, conversations about politics. Um, and I have, I have fairly strong opinions in politics. You need to raise your voice. I can see my voice. It's right there. Can anybody not hear me? I can't. You're starting to grumble and mumble. Keep talking. Um, <laughs> I mean, outside of that, you know, I have a general opinion of, you know, hey, live and let live, lest no one is being hurt. Um, Carol said that sex is a bedroom... Uh, conversation and yeah it is yeah sometimes we talk about sex too sometimes a little too much we talk about sex and we get in trouble for that 
So I tend not to talk about that as much. Yeah. What are you looking at? I was looking at you. That's weird. See, look. It makes me think you're trying to look at my brain through my ear hole. Was that a thing for you? Did you ever believe that? That's a topic right there. Did you ever believe that you could see your brain through your ear hole? No, because the eardrum was in the way. <laughs> right? <laughs> and who, pray tell, played the eardrum? Mm -hmm. You don't remember? No. The little flea on the dog. Do you remember on that cartoon, uh, the MGM cartoons that they used to have? There was the little flea that was on the dog. He was a little hobo flea, and he had a little pack. Yeah, uh huh. The hobo flea. He would get in the ear and and um, pound the drum. I never imagined that that there was also a bug in there. Also, <laughs> right. It's bad enough that there's a drum in your ear. Now you have a bug in it. Okay, so you hear the freaking chinchillas. Now, this is like it. It's a habit for them. It's a habit to get up when it's time for the podcast. And, and start running on the wheel. Guarantee it's Gus Gus. So TJ, your Gus Gus just likes to be on camera. He must be a little bit like me. Um, so anyway, these topics that we talk about that somebody says, no, don't talk about them. Um, one of the topics that we all want to talk about, even when somebody says, stop talking about it, is ourselves. Like, if we feel the need to talk about ourselves, meaning our issues, our thoughts, our opinions, our beliefs, our odor, whatever it is about us, if we um, have something going on with us, it is going to come out whether we want to have the conversation or not, yeah. right? Yeah. If somebody mentions one single thing that you're actually thinking about, all of a sudden you're there and you're either offended or yeah. you're being defensive, yeah, right? Yeah, shows in, in physical, in your language or in your body yeah. language. Or... And then you'll be like, let me tell you something about struggle. And then you start talking about your struggle, right? If somebody is talking about theirs and, and you need to talk about yourself, it is going to come out whether your intention is to say it or not. And that's usually if we've already reached a boiling point. Right, because typically on any given day, you can hold back a conversation. We have yeah. restraint as, as um, human beings. You know, we have free will. And so our willpower says we have the potential to shut the hell up when we, when we need to, right? So when is that um, need to shut the hell up um, not there? <laughs> when is it just absent for you? I don't know. Sometimes whenever I think, if I think that I have these moments where, I don't know, I don't know if it's just some kind of compulsion to over explain something, you know, <laughs> yeah. and it's not like mansplaining. It's not like that. It's like, I, I just, I don't feel like I'm being clear. Okay. Like I, I feel like I'm just, whatever I'm saying, it's just, it just doesn't make any sense. Right. So you are under the impression that what you're saying is not coming across the way you intend it to. Yeah. Okay, so is it usually a you thing, or is it usually the receiver? Oh, it's totally me thing. Okay, so are you I can, just I mean, not getting your point across? No, I, I, I think that, that I typically am. Um, it's just, I don't know, I just, I over-explain myself a lot, unnecessarily. That could be insecurity. Do you feel like it's an insecurity thing? Yeah, probably, because, you know, I'm... You know, I forget things a lot. And I feel like I'm wrong about a lot of things. So that's just, you know, I mean, I can see that that being an insecurity. And, you know, okay, well, let me explain all these stuffs, you know. What's the last so thing you... I can show you that I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> What's the last thing you thought you were wrong about? Because, you know, I don't like that when you say right or wrong or right. yes or no, true or false. I don't like the binary. Yeah. So when you say you're wrong, that is not something that I'm telling you. I'm not saying you're wrong and I'm right unless I'm joking. Right, right. I understand. Um, so when did you feel wrong? When you wore that purple um, shirt and the background was purple and it, you just looked like a floating head <laughs> earlier, the picture that I posted? Oh, 
Oh. <laughs> because your shirt was purple? I'm, yeah. I'm just teasing Honestly, you. Honestly, I just I thought that was what the filter was supposed no. to do anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing you. Anyway. No, so. was, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, crap, I'm sorry. Okay, so you're yeah, doing it. No, you're you grooming me. Something. I can't handle it. Nope. 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 This is why we don't sit near each you other. Had a thing right there. Yeah, I have a you. thing right there for my headphones. It doesn't mean I want you to touch me. All right. Especially my ear. This I did not stick is going to. It doesn't matter. Right it was here. close enough. Right this here. is a conversation we're having, even though I don't want to. An uncomfortable conversation about how I don't like to be touched. Stranger danger. <laughs> I don't like certain areas touched. It's a wonder. Yes. It's a, <laughs> it's a wonder that we even uh, have even uh, gotten married or had children or anything, right? right? See, that's a sex conversation, isn't it? You never know you're going into the conversation that is uncomfortable until you're in the conversation, right? And then you have to decide if you want to make it about you or if you want to have the conversation. And people who want to make it about them distract the hell out of everybody else so they don't have to have the conversation. Right. So what you just mm -hmm. did, doing the thing like that, that will totally get me out of any conversation ever. So if you ever just don't want to talk, just touch me. Oh, well, just next time I'll just leave the debris on you. I, I'm we'll good with that. It out. I'm good with that. I'll just constantly do this. So, yeah, the, the latex stuff on my headphones is coming off. Look at this. See? Dropped them. One too many times. And so now it's all nasty and coming off. See all that? Is that what it was, the black stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as it wasn't a bug. So, <coughs> um, how do you know when you are having an uncomfortable conversation? You think it's obvious, right? Yeah. But yeah, based usually, on what I just said. I don't know. Because um, you don't know until I'm you're in it. learning recently that, you know, I have this weird affect, you know. And, um. What? <laughs> like, like, if I enter, like, a place where, and I'm, like, extremely, like, you know, something's got me all messed up in the head, you know for as soon as I walk yeah the I room. can't even stand it you haven't even looked at me yet and you already know that there's yeah. something going on with me yeah it's like a chaos storm um I'm sure I was going somewhere with that but I'm not sure where so how do you know when you are having oh. an uncomfortable conversation um or going to have Oh, I or guess I kind of feel... What's that marker for you? Because all conversations start out innocent. Yeah. Um, so when does the line start to blur? And you're like, ooh. Because for me, it's money. I hate talking about money. I don't want to talk about it. If you start talking about it, I'm going to turn you off. I'm going to distract. I'm going to stick my finger in your ear. Yeah. Um... Probably for me, it's it's uh, it's got to be whenever if we talk about negative feelings, like I'm um, just feeling. So, what the hell happened? I don't know. It's feelings like um, just lost my my thing. Generally, I guess it's the ones you know. It's when I when I find out that I've been really unaware about something or someone or a situation or what have you, and. Um, in a moment that I really should have been present and aware. What was the last one? Uh, I don't know. It's I wasn't been a aware. while. <laughs> well, you have been and you haven't um, been. Yeah, definitely. I mean, in the past, I haven't been. Um, and? I'm reconnecting. And processing, and processing, and processing. Like this right here is, is trying to remember wh where I'm going with what I'm talking about is difficult for me. Because it, because... You get yourself out of the moment? Kind of, because it's, 
as soon as somebody you know starts talking about negative feelings, I immediately mm-hmm. like I start looking at myself from all angles, and I'm like, what have you done? You know, have you have you somehow contributed to, to this? And um, so I do this this sort of cross examination of myself in the moment, and I I learned it from um, from being at home with dad because dad was always like asking the angled questions and so like what um he would question around a certain subject and um and i guess try to play stump the chump with me a little bit and oh you might have to explain what that is to some oh, people the chump is when you uh you circle questions around a specific topic but you're not going to mention it you're going to get them you know to mention it or to admit to a certain thing it's sort of what you do for uh, to kids yeah and um so i sort of cross-examine myself in the moment and i kind of sometimes i get stuck but you know i start looking at all these different angles okay and if i'm not if i can't see myself as okay this this has nothing to do with you <coughs> then i can separate if i can do that then i can separate myself you know and then I can actually be a better help to whomever it is that's having a moment. But as soon as I see, oh my God, I did this, you know, then I have a whole, I'll have a whole problem of trying not to make it about myself because all I want to do is lash out at myself. Right. Yeah. So how do you keep yourself grounded from lashing out? Um, breathe, um, and tell myself, hey, I need to listen right now. Mm-hmm. I need to pay attention, and I need to not think about me. Yeah, Um, because sometimes uncomfortable feelings come from our kids. And we have to be, like, super present when our kids, you know, are saying something. Because we have uh, 18, 17, I know this, 13, and 10, right? That's their ages? I Mm -hmm. got them? Yes! That's right! So, um, of all the kids, I think the one that... Um, stresses me the most about their feelings is the girl because she's the girl who stresses you the most about their feelings probably Lucas because he's so deep he doesn't talk about them yeah that he I know what that's like right but that's the problem he's so deep he just he gets lost in them yeah you know instead of being that um, happy-go-lucky shallow type We've got Yay, the monitor it's back. back. Yay. Shallow type person um, like Oliver, Lucas will really dwell in those places. And like you said, you know what the, that's like. Um, Rory doesn't really have a whole lot to say um, emotionally. Um, and, you know, Oliver doesn't really either. So we're kind of stuck with the two middle ones. Do you think it has anything to do with just that, that they're the middle ones? That they're so extreme. I don't know. I mean, it could be. There's a lot of, a lot of psychology around that, around you know where kids are within the family, you know, station. Yeah, um, Alex is is very deep, also, but she's deep on a level that Lucas isn't. Um, oh, look, your cat's in here. The yeah. cat's in here. I just love that. Oh, right there. <laughs> she wants she's to be on Louise. Put her on camera. Here. Put the fat cat on camera. Fat belly. So I'm just going to have to clean up all the cat hair. Donna will love it, though. And um, and Joe. Joe will see it. Joe's texting me right now. Yeah, i seen it. Cooking supper. Hadn't seen it in a while. Shame on Joe. We were supposed to do our podcast two weeks in a row, and we didn't because the weather was crappy. And this anytime we have like super bad weather the signal is tough to stream from Mm -hmm. so yeah emmy there you go you're on camera uh oliver wanted to be on camera too but he's um not in here now yeah what's uh, he doing rory gave him his light up his old light up keyboard oh i bet he's very excited so yeah he's being big stuff with that right now big things man um so that is another one of those conversations um, that we're going to have anyway. We are those people that hand me down, hand me down, hand me down. And um, I realized with Lucas that when we were doing that, 
um, they weren't getting what was theirs. Like, or what they liked or what they deserved, right? Yeah. They, um, we keep handing down stuff and it's sort of like handing down a value. You know, um, Lucas and Oliver both like to dress up like little weirdos, sort of like me, right? Yeah, and, um, uh, uh, Oliver especially, he's, he's something. Yeah. <laughs> you might walk in the room and you never know what, what, what he's going to be dressed like or, or what he might say. Yeah, yeah kind of like me. <laughs> um, but, you know, Lucas, he likes to be very refined and tasteful. Yeah. And so he's, he's sort dignified. of... Yeah, he's very dignified. And um, little did I know that the clothes that Rory had weren't really going to fit Lucas, not just his body type, but his character. Because Roy is also a very different body type. And so they reach a certain age that all of a sudden they can't fit that um, little kid thing anymore. So we kept Roy's clothes up till he was um, about Lucas's age. And that's when all of a sudden things started changing and they started getting flavor yeah. <laughs> so definitely started um, developing their style about that. Point. Is she really gonna stay in here like this whole time? Probably. I don't know. Oh God! There's like a man. She's being quiet. Oh, God, cats. I know, Donna. I know. I'm trying to love her. I'm trying to love her. It's tough. Um. It's tough, but whatever. Um. Anyway, so it wasn't really suiting who they were. And so we have to have that conversation that goes, okay, I get it, Lucas, you're not Rory. I get it, Oliver, you're not Lucas. Now what? Who are you? That is a very uncomfortable conversation because it brings up feelings like you were talking about. Anytime shit gets too real, you want to check out. So the kids are all the same way too. Like shit starts to get real and they want to check out. Yeah, it's like, you know, when the when the emotion levels go up, you know, the anxiety goes up. Yeah, and the one way to make anxiety go up the quickest is to ask somebody something about themselves. Especially if they're the person that's always talking about someone else, you know, and they never... Because if they're talking about other people, it's because they don't want to be interested mm -hmm. in themselves, right? So, say I'm always talking about the kids and never talking about me. Um, people would go, wow, that person is really into their kids. That's right. Yeah, I can be really into my kids, right? But if I talk about um, my kids in reference to them being my kids and what my kids have accomplished because of me, I'm no longer talking about my kids. I'm talking about me, mm -hmm. right? So there is that fine line where I may talk about my kids and respect in regard to my values and how they've carried them on but I also want to give them props for what they've done because if I take their failures away from them I'm also taking their successes uh, so if I say you know good for you um, insert kids name yeah. here they you know, need to own their failures so they can own their successes right so there's there's none of that crap and pushing them in the mud puddle and making fun of them when they you know Blow snot out their nose. Lucas and Rory both have uh, have those embarrassment type moments. Where somebody pushed them in the mud. <laughs> yeah, but Lucas wasn't me though. I didn't push Lucas in nothing. He just got pushed into it. It wasn't me. Wasn't me. But um, you know, all these conversations that we have between you and I, we choose to stream. You know, and these are real conversations that we have. And so when we're having these, we're not thinking what's going to come up that's uncomfortable that the rest of our audience is going to hear. Right? Because we're streaming this live. Yeah. So we're not sitting here going, hmm, what are we going to talk about that's going to get us up shit creek without a paddle? Ooh, that's another one of those conversations. Right? That we've had is, what the hell did you say and why? To boot, for instance. That's a conversation we've had. Why do I say Katie bar the door when shit gets real? 
Yeah, I've never heard that one before. Katie Bar the Door, mm -hmm. to boot. Um, what's another one that I said? Carol, I know I said one. What was it? Because she made fun of me for it, too. Still up with another one. Still up is one of those. Yeah, I'm all still up. Um, but we say these weird things like that, right? And um, and we don't realize how weird we sound. Yeah, and in, in the army, it's like the version of stove up is broke ass. Yeah, broke ass. That's true. But you know, um, once somebody makes you aware that you speak like an imbecile, <laughs> then you're like, oh wait, do I really? And you start to listen, and you start to evaluate, and then that can get you in trouble, because then you think what? You're comparing yourself to other people, not to yourself, right? Who you actually want to be. Yeah. So as soon as you ask yourself that question, then all of a sudden you want to shut up and go somewhere else. <laughs> you don't want to talk about it, right? So then you just talk about somebody that you know in comparison. So that's where you start talking about your friend. You know, oh yeah, my friend had a, a car just like that, and he did this. No, fool, that's not what you're really meaning. You're meaning you, <laughs> but whatever, you know. So, um, I need to have a conversation with Lori, my client, because uh, she left her glasses here. And I'm pretty certain they're hers, because I can only trace it back um, to she was the last one in the chair before Carol. I thought they were Carol's. And I got this really bad look from Carol whenever I assumed that they were hers. As if she would need reading glasses. <laughs> wow. So, whatever, la -dee da <laughs> Un Uncomfortable feelings, right? What about when somebody points out uh, something that you know has um, gone downhill? Um, this, I don't really... I think it's usually when somebody mentions it about themselves that I notice it about myself. Don't be. Like, um, we were commenting about how Christopher is now, what, 31? Oh, my God. Like, Uncomfortable shit. conversation. Alert, alert, alert. I was 14 when he was born. Okay. So how do I know that this is going to be an uncomfortable conversation right now? Because one of my things is, you know, that span of time that is missing for me. So when I go back and I look at being dysfunctional and realize that I missed a whole chunk of, you know, my life because I was not present, that thing that you were talking about, right? Because I wasn't kind of solidifying memories or anything. Anytime somebody mentions time, it freaks me out. Yeah. It's weird. It's like, yeah, when I think about, you know, the parts that I do remember, it's like it wasn't even my life. It was somebody else's. Yeah, it's strange like that. Oh, look, I have a unicorn um, band-aid because I've got a terrible splinter. <laughs> terrible splinter. So, of course, you would need a unicorn band-aid. Uh, is there another kind? I mean, for real. You know... It's like Pegasus. Or... <laughs> I don't even think about how super queer I am on any given day until somebody, like, stops and comments on something. Like, um... Like the band. The really nice scarf you wearing right now. Right, yeah, yeah. Or or um hmm, cool dapper. socks or something like that. And then I'm like, Oh yeah, 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 I did leave the house like this, right? Um, not so, true. You know I use buffalox, yeah, but <laughs> Okay, so Carol says the look that she gave me was because I should have known how her glasses looked. Okay, but like I don't because I don't look at her glasses. I mean, I do, but I don't. All glasses look the same to me. That's one of those things. That's an awkward conversation. So there's a difference between awkward conversations and uncomfortable ones, right? Or um, is being awkward just uncomfortable? I don't know. I th they can often go hand in hand. Okay. So for me, it's there's a very definite Is awkward line. also uncomfortable? Are they synonymous in all cases? I, it, well, I think it's subjective. I don't. I, I think that it's individual. Um, for me, an uncomfortable conversation is one about time, one about money. Um, but an awkward conversation is one about sex, one about religion, one about politics, those bedroom conversations. Mm -hmm. So for me, bedroom conversations are awkward. But uncomfortable are those trigger things for me. 
So what do you think? What's uncomfortable for you? What's awkward for you? Um, I think that, you know, sex is definitely one of those that's kind of awkward for me because it was just, it was never regular speak, you know, growing up. It was just, you know, it's understood and it doesn't ever need to be spoken about. Was it ever understood, though? Like, was sex, like, actually understood? Um, no, not really. Because, because we grew up thinking binary. Yeah, um... Or do you mean the act of sex? Do you mean sex is in biology or sex is in the act of? Um, probably... Both? Yeah, that and sex and love and the difference between the two. Okay. So why is it... You know, they're not necessarily... They, those two don't necessarily go hand in hand. You can have sex without love. So which is more uncomfortable or awkward for you? To what? talk about sex or love um, drugs or rock and roll the red guy or the blue guy oh thank you ah get it out <laughs> I guess probably sex because it's you know one of my insecure areas in my life so is sex awkward or uncomfortable uh, I don't know sometimes it's both <laughs> Well, are um, they the same for you? No. Okay. So, like, I described an awkward conversation and an uncomfortable one. Uncomfortable for me are those triggers I have, right? Individual triggers, like time and money. Mm -hmm. Okay, but those um, awkward conversations are those conversations about bedroom topics. Yeah, I think for me it's because I've, you know, for my whole life, I've, you know, up until, I guess, until we got together, I had a very private life. A yeah. Very, which is funny because you were a soldier. Reclusive, you know, style of living. I didn't, you know, go out and socialize unless I was going to go out and get wasted. And um, I wasn't really interested in anything else other than the alcohol. You're pretty quiet. Um, but, yeah, so now that, you know, I mean, I think I, the most social I've ever been in my life is since we've been together. I love you. I'm going to need you not to do that. Uh, <laughs> I can't. Put my hands together a lot. Yeah, I, I can't. I can't deal with that sound. Um, okay, so for me, um, sex was talked about all the time because I grew up on a farm. So I knew what breeding was. I knew, you know, all of that stuff. It was never uncomfortable to talk about sex or biology. It was uncomfortable 100% to talk about love. Because with love, there's obligation, and mm -hmm. there's a story, right? Yeah. With sex, there's no obligation and no story. It's science. It's fact. You know, this one has this, and this is what it does, and then here you have offspring. And if you grow up on a farm, you know that that's pretty important, you know, is for you to have, you know, either fertilized or unfertilized eggs from the chicken. It depends on what you're wanting to do with them, right? You have to know this stuff whenever you grow up on a farm, and it's very confusing whenever you're growing up and looking at yourself and going, how does this work, <laughs> right? When did you realize that there just was something about either your biolo biology, your biological sex, or something wrong with how you perceived your orientation? Because either way, sex is sex, right? But you had a very binary thought, just like I did, that, you know, you had to have both in order to be complete. You had to be able to make a whole unit. Yeah, with sex and love. Right. And um, Yeah, I've always just <coughs> equated to it's easier than to, than to, you know, go into meaningless relationships and to have, you know, meaningless connections with people just to shut it off the next day. But you realize that love is actually acceptance, like full acceptance. Mm -hmm. You can't have love if you don't have acceptance. Yeah. And that's probably another thing, too, is I didn't feel, you know, I mean, nobody yeah. who feels really fully accepted, you know. It, it, a lot of people. Do they? Yeah. Because I, I don't understand that feeling when it comes to, like, you know, stuff like one-night stands and things like that. Well, I'm not saying necessarily one that stands, but a lot of people f can feel accepted no matter what because the actual feeling of being accepted comes from within you. It's not a feeling that someone else gives you, right? So you have to actually love and accept yourself in order to feel that love and acceptance from someone else. And so 
if you don't love and accept yourself, then you can't feel it from someone else. Make sense? Because you don't know what it feels like. Yeah. Me, however, I 100% know what it feels like to be accepted and loved. And therefore, I know that I can accept and love other people. Mm -hmm. I have a whole host of clients. They're very, very diverse people. And every single one of them offers me something that encourages humanity, right? So they offer me a signal, a sign, or effort, um, their own energy or their opinion that says, I'm part of the human race and I have an opinion and it e is either the same as yours or different than yours, right? But they still offer you something to go on that says, I'm not alone in this world and I get to have a conversation, even if it's about farts, right? <laughs> okay. Well, I have a conversation about farts every single time I see somebody because it's the easiest yeah. analogy, right? You leave your, your farts behind with your kids, you know, and, and they stick them in their own backpacks. And then at some point they have to get rid of all of those dirty values that you gave them, you know, and they have to start replacing those stinky ones with ones that they like. Speaking of stinky ones. Anyway, at cat, she's pushing it. You're pushing it so hard. That's a conversation. And that's what she said. Um, but as far as, you know, love and acceptance, you know, I mean, it, that's, I guess, you know, you were the, the first person I felt safe with. Aww. You were the first person I felt loved and accepted as far as, you know, this kind of relationship. Okay, so do you remember the first point that you felt accepted by me, therefore felt loved? Because that would tell me when you started to love yourself. Um, right? When I started to, to kind of open up to you to, you know, let you know that, you know, who, who I was. Or at least what who I understood. So I when you first time. came out to me as a cross-dresser, was that what you mean? Yeah, that was kind of like a, a um, well, I'm going to say this thing. And they're either going to reject me, and then I'll pack my shit up and go back home, <laughs> um, or we'll see where this goes. Right. And so it was an all or nothing kind of, you know, that was really a pivotal moment. And here we are. I would have turned around and walked away and never seen me again. Yeah, here we are 20 years later. You know, who would have thought? And, you know, it it wasn't even anything to me. Like, it, it just... I just knew that it happened anyway. Yeah, I just assumed. it was it wasn't something you just as cut and dry as, you know. Oh, I'm gonna put these clothes on. It was a lot of difficulty trying to sort out who I really was. Yeah, but you didn't know that I did the same thing and I felt the same way. No, you know? so here you're coming out to me, and in my mind I'm just like, yeah, so you're normal. I didn't realize because you know I was with you, so I thought that literally everybody was like us. I didn't know that there were people in this world that were very um, um, straight, that were very... Uh, um, um, straight camp. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I didn't realize that real people outside of religion and, and, and government and all that, just like everyday people, I didn't realize that everyday people really were not fluid like I was. I really had no clue. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, I did. It was for me. It was the other way. I didn't know how many people were out there that were that were weren't, you know, hard nosed. It's so strange that we were raised similar but very very different, and we end up on the same road. So that has to tell you something, people. If her and I end up on the same road, despite the fact that we were raised incredibly different, stands to reason that maybe this shit just might be one of those things that happens, right? Being trans is one of those fantastic, fabulous um, superpowers that we have. That's how I like to think of it. Because it lets me have perspective on what it's like to be raised as a woman in, in a man's world and what it's like to be a man in a woman's world. Yeah, it's definitely because I've done both. given me perspective, you know. And it's not like, you know, oh, well, how could you know or whatever. You know, it's in the emotional hey, perspective. Look right here. Okay. Right here. The emotional contrast between, you know, um, having a, a system 
ruled by male hormones versus female hormones is it's so different it's so different it's i mean it's can you even describe what it's like i don't try because for me it's not quite drastic like you i had naturally high testosterone as living as a woman um that's what separated me from most of the women is that I grew some chest hair and I had a little bit of a beard, you know, that I'd have to pluck. Um, my mindset wasn't very um, sociable, uh, like um, that nurturey type sociable um, that, you know, a lot of the wives, a lot of the moms, you know, would form these groups. And, um, and I'm aware that some don't, but um, women are... Uh, the feminine energy typically is a very nurturing, social um, kind of, I guess, network. You know, it's a team versus the independent type of masculine energy. So it just wasn't really there for me. Um, and it wasn't because I lacked effort. It was because I just had a higher testosterone. You know, so hormones definitely play that part um, in how you're perceived because I was perceived as a bearded woman. I was perceived, you know, and other people, other women that have PCOS have the same issue, you know, and so that's just who I was. You're really distracted. What do you want to talk about? Oh, I'm just I'm not very comfortable right now tonight with my back and everything. Oh, look, a message from Alex. She says me and Tom instead of Tom and I. Ugh. Criminy. Can't stand it. No, she does that on purpose. I know she does. And I know it's acceptable too, so everybody can chew me out about that. That's and that'll just be another uncomfortable conversation, right? Chew me out about my own English. I don't care. <laughs> but that drives me nuts when she says that and she knows it. Um okay, so when it comes to the sex thing, um, and the hormone thing and et cetera, et cetera, I think that I just always knew in the back of my mind that um, the act of sex was very different for every person. I never believed that you just had sex one way. And it's, I don't understand it really a lot, you know, I mean, there's, you know, a lot of people can just, you know, go in and, and it's just not a thing for them, but it's, I have difficulty if I don't have an emotional connection. Maybe get like a lot of difficulty if I don't have an emotional connection. That's because you're a very, very deep emotional woman. Right? I don't know. I just figured it's one of my obstacles I need to overcome. Why do you think it's an obstacle? Because it's a hindrance. To whom? To me. You know, it's, it's one of those, it becomes an anxiety issue. You know, and... I question myself, I second guess myself. Why do you feel like you should not love someone in order to be um, sexual with them? Because that's literally what you just said. No, I'm not saying that it's like that's the way it's, it's got to be. You know, it's just Why do you think difficult. you need to get over the fact that you have hard or heavy feelings whenever you are um, loving someone? You know, you fall deep. And why then should you not allow yourself to do that? I don't understand. Because we're talking about you with me because because we're married. So yeah. why would you not want to? <coughs> excuse me. Why I'm would you talking not want like to? an external type situation. Like you know, if if I were like a single person, I guess. Okay. So if you were a single person, you would want to be able to have casual sex without falling in love. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Wow. I mean, I, because it's, it's, I don't know. I mean, as a single person these days, it's... I don't think that that's really is, a value is, that you need to strive for. Now, well, if you're I'm talking not, about you looking, don't want to be a prude... No, what I'm, I mean, now it's like, I'm, you know, I'm happily married. I'm not, you know, I'm not having any, any real problems, but... Um, but, yeah, I mean, I guess, I mean, I, I like that freedom. Wow, Leo, you're a Leo. I just—it's just I don't understand it. So it's—I don't know. I guess that's 
we gravitate what you know towards what we don't understand you know yeah. seeking elimination i guess well for me um love and acceptance are totally separate from sex i can love and accept yes. you yes a thousand percent i don't have to have sex with you yes i don't want to have casual sex right so that whole conversation was awkward and, and confusing. <laughs> it covered it covered all the bases there. Well, um, I was trying to just, you know, I guess relate my understanding of it. I guess I don't know what, what, you know, certain certain things are for different people. I just assumed that sex was different for every person, and therefore, because I thought the act of sex was different for every person. I felt like every person's biological sex was individual. Because only only me, ever made it as far as everybody has, you know, their things, what they enjoy, what works for them, what doesn't work for them, you know, based on this, that, or the other. But did you think of the hetero norm? Is that what you always thought, that that there had to be a boy and a girl in order to make sex? No. So you knew... Um, at a young age, I knew that, or at least I learned at a young age, that it wasn't always, you know, just a boy and a girl. Sometimes it was mixed up. And, um, but according to everything I knew, that was wrong. According to everything you knew, yeah, what did you know? That's, you know, growing up um, with my mom and, and all the, I guess, her religious... Um, journey or quest, you know, looking for, I guess, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Carol says she feels awkward and uncomfortable because she's watching it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what? Um, but that's what we're talking about, though, is, and but, we're talking yeah, she, about it anyways yeah, because she, it's awkward and uncomfortable. You know, she was the first to tell me, okay, this is, you know, this is dirty. You know, sex is dirty. You know, and so... Sex is just dirty, filthy, awful, wonderful stuff, isn't it? It's not dirty. It is. It's supposed to be. It's supposed it's, to be taboo, right? It's not dirty. It's dirty. That's what I'm saying. It's supposed to be taboo. And don't ever say it like that again because that's gross and creepy and I didn't like it. Ugh. Ha. Nope. That was uncomfortable for sure. Um, I knew that sex was necessary, so I never questioned the acceptance of it, right? Um, and to me, acceptance is love. So I can love anything science, I can love anything natural, I can love anything that is part of nature. And I never thought it was bad or wrong. Never once did I think it was bad or wrong. It was quite the opposite for me. I was shown how it was um, effective and productive and part of who we were, um, as animals, as creatures. As long as you were married, though, right? No, I mean... Because um, that was another hard-driven lesson. Right, but you're, again, talking about religious persecution. In my life, I wasn't persecuted on a regular basis. We had values, and we wanted to uphold those values. My dad still has a lot of those values. But I didn't feel like sex was persecuted. I felt like um, the evil intention was. So if you were ill intended, you would you would get smoten, right? Yes. But but you didn't have to be ill intended if you were ignorant. Right? So ignorance is bliss. So if you were ignorant to the fact that you were not s supposed to lay with a man or a woman or whatever, if you were ignorant to that fact, you were forgiven until the moment you found out. And then the moment you find out that that's not a value that you need to uphold and you choose it anyway, then that's a conversation we need to have, right? Right? Yeah. Um, I mean, if, if you're dealing with those topics, you know, then, I mean, why, why is it wrong? But it's not wrong unless someone tells you it is. Yeah. I mean, that's when I was young, point. that's what I understood. Yeah, I understand today that that is not the case. Right, you understand that today, but how long did it take you to understand that? Because how long did you believe it? I've believed that, you know, it was always okay for everybody else except me. 
That wasn't the question. How long did you believe that that was wrong or bad? Oh, um, probably until I got into my teenage years, and I guess I gained a new level of understanding, and things, you know, started to, like, not add up. I was like, wait a minute. This person told me this some one thing, and now I'm looking at an actual health book. <laughs> right, so, so. Um, but there was no discussion about being trans in the health book when, when we were growing up. No. You had to figure it out, but you didn't figure it out until a few, you know, well, I say a few years ago, yeah. like 10, I just knew 10 I was, years ago. I was different, and the way I felt was not the way I needed to feel. So the first person and the only person that you had that awkward conversation with was me. Yeah. And now we just had the whole awkward conversation to the rest of the world. And I can't thank you enough for sharing as much as you did tonight because I think that that's the most you've ever shared ever. Ever, ever, ever. And now you're checking out. No, no, I keep seeing you check out. And I was looking at the flashing blue light. Yeah, you're checking out because it's an uncomfortable thing when someone says thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. I'm taking some pride in the fact that I have an intelligent, insightful wife. I appreciate that. You're and welcome. And I think that you should take pride in yourself occasionally, don't you? Mm -hmm. You just did something that you don't typically do. You had a conversation about yourself. Yeah. And it's funny because I started out saying, you know, the one thing that we can do is have a conversation about ourselves, right? Yeah, when you asked me a lot of questions that, you know, demanded I answer them a certain way. Right, and that's why I'm a life coach, because I ask those demanding questions, make you think about yourself, and talk about it, right? You can talk about it with me, you can talk about it with yourself, it doesn't matter. But the truth of the matter is, unless you love and accept yourself and see yourself as um, the sexual being that you are, then you don't find that in other people. Right. You know, you, you don't hear somebody loving and accepting you. And you also don't see yourself, you know, as sexual. You know, if you continue to go through life denying that you have a sex, denying a gender of any kind, the question is, do you become asexual? No. Not if you just deny your gender, right? But you acknowledge that you're a sexual being. You know, and, and if you if you don't, then you aren't because it's your reality anyway. Right? right. Yeah, I mean we, we establish and, and create our own realities. And so when it's somebody else's reality is when we have the conversation. Because if you just keep quiet about it, it's only yours. Yeah. So you have to give perspective to other people, right? Yeah, and perhaps gain some from them. Mm -hmm. You always gain perspective when you talk about yours. Did you know that? Because there's always someone listening. Sometimes it's just Mother Nature. Yeah, there's there's times I've had, you know, an out loud conversation, you know, with nobody, you know, while I'm maybe driving the car or something, and it's just, you know, while I'm, I guess I'm hashing something out, and I usually come to a realization by the end, by the time I'm done talking to an invisible person. I miss Joe. You know why? We have an awkward, uncomfortable conversation every time we're together. Because you put him on the spot, and he reacts differently than I do. I know. It's it's amazing. I love it so much. Let's call it for what it is. <laughs> I told I told he and Karen that we had to get together for game night or movie night or something because I miss Karen and Emily and Olivia. Yeah. And uh, it's sad. My world's gotten small. It's just us. What was that game that we played that one time with the spoons? Do you remember that? The spoon game? No, I don't remember that. I was at the table. Anywho's. Um, and you know what? I want to give a shout out to Lindsay, who seems to be doing much better. Yeah. I briefly saw a post on Facebook about some jars that she was given. I didn't read the whole thing. It's when I was posting for this. So I'm glad that she's feeling better. And Aunt Sarah's messaged me, and I hope the message sent. I sent her one back. Um, and Donna, um, her picture, her last picture that she sent was amazing to me. It makes me happy when I see pictures of her. And you said something I hadn't really taken stock in, but she doesn't usually take a picture straight on. And that was the first time that we saw it straight on. And it was great because it does give you a different perspective of her, right? 
And she's so beautiful and just yeah. light and kind. Love that picture. I know. It's going to have to go in a frame somewhere. So we're just going to have pictures of Donna and Sarah and Lindsay. <laughs> we're going to just go through people's Facebooks. Um, and my sister probably doesn't listen, but I'm giving a shout out to her too. And uh, because she goes through some rough times and mom's birthday's coming up. And, you know, it's one of those situations where you want to be close to family when you're grieving. And... Um, I know that sometimes she still grieves, and so uh, I'm going to make an effort to talk to her in the How next few days. So far, oh, I'm doing okay. I'm, I'm keeping watch on Dad. That's an awkward conversation. So, see, I'm not even going to talk about it. I love you, <laughs> and um, I'm done here. I want to get some Chinese food. Yeah. So make the phone call and I'll go try. Hey, thank you for having all the awkward conversations with yes, me. Yes, it was sufficiently awkward. And being super uncomfortable. And I definitely need some Chinese food now to, to quell this. Do you want so. to rub your hands together for a little bit make yourself feel better? Mm -hmm. Do you want to touch my ear again? Because I won't let you. No, because I wasn't touching your ear. To, Don't even look at it. I can't even stand it. Stop it. Stop. You're weird. Thank you guys for watching. And you know what, Pooja? A message once in a while would be nice. I see you on the page. So um, my love to all of the people that watch and all the people that support us, and we will be talking again soon. So, sees yes. Thank you, babe. Bye.